Um, I was at Tate for seven years and I had a number of different roles, but I can answer this question with the, the last project that I did when I was there, working for the, for the Tate's website um, and the Tate's collection online. Tate um, digitized its collection very early. Um, it was actually completed in the year 2000, so it's always been ahead of the game. Um, however, the digitized collection was very much a database, uh, very powerful, um, very good, but it was a database. And what that meant was, from a consumer perspective, they weren't be able to engage with art. You know, the art can't move you to tears um, in a database. So I led a project to transform the database into an experience. Really, this is about making it something much more consumer friendly. It is still driven by a database underneath, but it allows for, for example, much larger images, much simpler, more beautiful layouts to kind of increase the possibility that the art could move you, um, that you could, uh, it could affect your emotions, potentially move you to tears or whatever the artwork uh, was able to do. Um, and that was a very different thing from a database which is just for reference and an experience which is something a little bit closer to what you get when you're inside the gallery. We're a non-for-profit uh, platform um, at Google and we work with cultural organisations uh, all over the world in nearly 70 countries now and well over 900 organisations. Uh, the project's um, about four years old and what we've done as the project has grown is enter different cultural disciplines. So we began with art um, and history and archaeology and have brought them together and have then had some significant focus points. Last year we did a large project on street art for example, and just this week, two days ago, we launched a large project uh, with performing arts organizations. So in that case, we were working with theater companies, opera houses, uh, ballet companies, and so on, figuring out how best to translate the wonderful experience that you get um, on stage, uh, that an audience experiences, to how you can translate that online. And I'll be demonstrating a little bit of that shortly at the conference, but we deployed 360 video there, allowing you, the audience, to see what it's like on stage next to a ballet dancer, next to an opera singer, and so on. So this kind of points to the direction that we're going, which is entering new cultural arenas, figuring out what new technologies we can bring to those arenas, and then pulling the two together to create engaging experiences for consumers. There's a couple of points there. The first is that we give free technology to all of these cultural institutions. A very, very powerful enterprise technology. Um, and we do things like street view inside those locations. We have very, very high resolution photographic digitization. Uh, the 360 video that I mentioned. Uh, we have a fully featured CMS platform uh, behind the scenes that drives all of this. And of course, a very powerful and functional web platform along with mobile applications all of that is free. Um, the second thing is that we also have an enormous audience. So we're able to bring a very powerful mainstream audience to the world of culture and introduce them to the materials that you find in these archives, in these opera houses, in these museums, sometimes for the first time. And we hope that that sparks a journey where people enjoy what they see and then perhaps go and visit those locations in person as the next step. I oversaw the whole project about performing arts. Um, it's fantastic to see Apollonia now available, to have the context of understanding the play um, and the history of it, and then to be able to see it in full um, with the video that is embedded from YouTube. What this does is it provides a very accessible entry point for those who may not have gone to see the play in person at the, at the theatre, um, but can now understand it, understand the context and its importance, and of course view it online. And so again for us it's an example of a journey that might begin with digital and end up with physical, where someone sees something and then goes to view it afterwards. So it's fantastic to work with the National Audiovisual Institute and um, our eight, 17 other partners across Poland um, to be able to tell the stories of Poland and be able to tell them to the world because this is a global platform.